don't like how for the first two minutes people be nervous and then all of a sudden they just come out. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. I just love it. I just love it because it it takes a lot to you know come up here on a mic and talk to people that you may or may not know. Yes. I mean, take it from me. Uh, performing hip hop in front of strangers, performing stand up comedy in front of strangers, like. I'd be up there for like a whole hour and I'd be like, yo, I don't know what this is. <laughs> but it's all about just starting. Just starting. Just let it out. You know, you know, all of us can be nervous, but at the end of the day, family, we out here. We do what we got to do. As a little girl, I was young, I was wild, I was free, I was giving and unassuming. And that made me pray for individuals who fed upon my innocence. You know, when you are, who, when you just come as you are and you're unassuming, you know, there are people in your life that will take advantage of you. And as a child, as a little black girl, that was very dangerous. I was praying because of that. Um, and I fell victim to um, violations of my body. I fell victim to um, mental manipulation. I was bullied. And um, it laid the groundwork for the types of relationships that I would struggle through for all of my 20s before I really found myself. And so in that process, my shadow was created. The shadow is a part of ourselves that we suppress. Those parts of ourselves that we don't share with anybody, the parts of ourselves that we lock in the closet. That's what I did because of what I had been through. I locked it because I was compared to other people when it came to my voice. Not only am I a survivor to domestic violence, I'm a survivor to a narcissist. Mm. And let me tell you something. I thought that when I walked away from this domestic abuse, it was over. And little did I know, it was just the beginning. When people talk about domestic violence or domestic abuse, they think of just the physical. But hardly do we ever speak about or elaborate on the emotional, the verbal, psychological, what it does to you after the fact. So when I walked away, I felt like it's done, but nobody warned me about the after effects that I would have to now heal myself from to become whole, healed, and healthy. In the black community, we don't talk about it. Um, in 2016, matter of fact, this month, I lost time to breast cancer. Who? We gonna take care of it, we gonna breathe. But in June of 2016, her son committed suicide. As a healthcare professional, I picked up on the signs. I knew that he wasn't gonna be able to handle or grieve properly. So I told the family, hey, watch him. Let's get him some help. He tried to get help. He went to the emergency room, you know, started grieving. Why are you grieving? What's going on? I just lost my mom at eight. He left the emergency room, AMA, went home, and took his life. Mm -hmm. Man, you all have been affected by suicide. It doesn't stop with him. It trickled down into my family, and we all were affected by it. Now we thought we was, that was over. Now my story, 2017, January, I lost my dad. Fast forward again, grieving, trying to take care of that. 2018, two days after losing my dad just a year before, I lost my mom. My life changed. I went from raising one child to three children. Now, I'm the breadwinner of my family. 
you got to take care of yourself. That's the only thing I know. Take care of yourself. Finally, I had a place started back in 2017 because of my cousin. But I also knew that I needed to find my happy place. And God was setting me up during them times to actually do what I need to do to make sure my family is straight. So when I say finally it has to pay, we have to have those conversations and you really gotta strive to find your happy place. They pulled this ambulance over to the side of the road. And as you can imagine, my mother and grandmother were freaking out. Um, their baby had lost his heartbeat. They began to frantically work on me to try to restore my heartbeat. And um, seconds went by, and I'm sure it seemed like a lifetime to my family. But um, my grandmother said that all she could think to do was call on the name of Jesus. Mm, come on now. And as she began to call on the name of Jesus, she said that the paramedics pushed out the way and said, ma'am, we have to get back. We have to work on this child. And in the nick of time, as she stood out on the side of the road, screaming and calling for Jesus to save her baby, they got my heart beat down. Mm. And they said, ma'am, we can go ahead with the same rules. The baby is okay. God laid his hands on me that day, somewhere in between Memphis and St. Louis. And I got news for you, he ain't took off me. So uh, it is my duty to do what I'm doing today. I have an obligation to do this uh, because God saved my life so that I can be a blessing. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Go on up. We have to let everybody know something so that they can gravitate to it, learn from it, and absorb it. You know? We as animals, as human beings, we got this, I mean, we're so indelibly smart. We got all this gradual things together. I mean, we got this potential to change the world, unlike any other animals. A dog is a dog, and a bear is a bear, and a cat is a cat. But we're humans, man. We can do a lot of super interesting things. But then you have the shark, right? Which is the most dangerous animal out there, but it's the smallest animal in the sea. What he does is he flies through the waters like nothing. He treacherous, he finds things. He uses shark focus on finding something that you find because blood is his option. He's gonna go after something without any reservation. And he's gonna attack it. The eagle flies as high as any eagle in the world. Or any bird in the world. Because people are afraid to go higher. And when the eagle flies up so high, oh my goodness, the world is his. He can do anything he wants to do. And that's what's wrong with us today. Most of us, anyway, we get shelled or disheveled because of, 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 of interferences and issues and everything else. That we don't fly as high as the eagle. Until this day, I know who my daddy is. He never left me. And one thing I can say about Urban Archer. He don't care who you are, what you say about them, about him. He's not gonna change nobody. He was still urban then, he's still urban now. And because I seen my dad's example, he never left me, I have nothing to respect for him. Black made more important. Never this world, this society bring out down so much, but I know so many, we have great black men here in this room today. You are as Never let nobody tell. They, they get, I don't know what, they get on y'all so hard. Well, every time I see a black man, y'all carry this world on y'all shoulders. Because when hands a black man, that's why we ride in these cars that we see. It was a black man. So black kings, that's what you are. Don't let this world tell you that you're not royalty. I love me some black men. Because, you know what, I have a black father. That, and then my black father told me how to be a real woman. Mothers don't understand the role of the father. That's why I don't understand why some of these, these baby moms are special. And I ain't gonna lie. I'm glad I'm not a, a man. I'm gonna be trying to 
I could. Um, and I'm a female, I'm still getting with y'all But <laughs> I don't understand why a mother would take away the kids father, the black father, that want to be in their kids' lives. I see it daily on Facebook, you know, on social media. The mental, bad mental health that you're doing to that child. Now you're thinking, oh, my father doesn't love me. My father didn't want to be there. The man, woman, we are according to. But it's something about that black man. And I didn't mean to go into this, but something God is telling me, please, man, the black family has been diminished, it's been broken down. We need to get back into it. This all plays a part in mental health. Because how our minds just got, whoo, it just got, I don't know what happened. But we are better than this. We are strong people. Let me tell you something, y'all said to kill it. I know every business, everything that you want to do, keep God first and knowing that you can do this thing. Thank you.